The Brattleboro Retreat, operating for over 170 years, is one of America's leading psychiatric hospitals dedicated exclusively to mental health and addiction care for people of all ages. The hospital came about during a period of time when severely mentally ill were seen as being devoid of humanity. You might have seen people chained to barns or taken to the river and dipped in the river. This hospital was part of a movement that countered that approach. This place was founded 1834. Anna Marsh bequeathed $10,000 and she had a commitment in her heart that said that moral treatment was the way to go. What that's translated down through the years is respect and dignity. It is putting the person who seeks our care at the center of treatment. We really focus on the milieu. We add more staff and uh, programming around that than you'd find in other hospitals these days. Why do we do it? Because it's who we are. And I think that it's part of the language here that there's a compassionate caring on how people are cared for. Addiction and mental illness is the great equalizer. It affects everybody. And it's a population that the rest of medicine often would rather not deal with. My daughter was in dance for six years. And when she started hearing voices, she stopped dancing. She was diagnosed with attention deficit disorder obsessive compulsive disorder, oppositional defiant disorder, and trichotillomania. We tried every type of therapy you can imagine. She just either stayed the same or got worse. The final deciding factor for us in seeking residential treatment was after a particularly bad day, my son came out of his room and he climbed in my lap and he said, Mommy, can't we just dig a hole and have someone bury us so we can go to heaven because it's just too hard? We specialized the program to her and the staff really worked hard with uh, trying to connect with her. They worked with us as a team. They thought about our whole family. They were just amazing. Because of what we were able to do, we were to give her some small gains and small successes, she began to feel better about herself. There's kind of an ethos in the department that we would rather spend extra time with our patients to provide that quality of care because that's what people deserve. The staff was so committed to keeping her here for as long as we needed, but she missed dance before. She danced ballet, jazz. She had come far enough to bring into her therapist's office a list of dance studios. And so we signed her up for the dance um, lessons right in town. So for her to start again was, was truly um, a, a turn towards recovery. I got my hope back. And now she can dance again. <laughs> we really pride ourselves in having a community. Anyone who walks through the door is a part of that community. And no matter what's going on with them, it's addressed. When someone shows up here, we treat them as if we would want someone to treat one of our family. What would you want them to be treated as? So I assume that, you know, everybody has a, well, everybody has a mother and a father. We provide hope, healing, safety, and privacy through a full continuum of medical and holistic services delivered by expert caregivers in a uniquely restorative Vermont setting. I think this whole thing takes a lot of courage and I think we sometimes underestimate the level of courage it takes for someone to pick up the phone and call us and say, I think I need help. 1990, I'd been seeing a woman for three years. We went out for dinner. I ended up drinking the night away and it was about after the 20th beer or, or 20th drink that she told me, maybe it wasn't that many, say 10, 10's more reasonable. She told me she was gonna marry somebody else. Took her back to her house. I walked in singing, I'm getting married in the morning. And her father looked at me and said, do you want some help? Nobody had ever asked me that before. They had always posed it as a statement saying, you should get some help. They never said, do you want some help? Well, I said, yes. Two days later, I was at the Brattleboro Retreat. 
and I haven't had a drink since. One of the advantages of working here 25 years is that I have seen people get better over the years and really make a difference in their lives. When I came up here, I cried for the first week. I won't lie to you. I cried my, tear, my heart out, and it was good because it was probably the first time I cried in 20 years or so. If you needed to get something off your chest, they were there to listen, not to criticize, and to support. They treated me like I was a human being. We're looking for an outcome where a person feels re-engaged in life. We're looking to find an outcome that makes a child feel joy in waking up in the morning. That to us is what the legacy is all about. If it weren't for the retreat, she would have gone on a path of self-destruction. If I had kept drinking as I had been, there's a very good chance that I would, would not have been alive today. The relationship with the mental health professional is a healing and generative process. And that's the kind of work we do. We give people a sense of self without shame. They were respectful, unbelievably caring. Compassion. Amazing people. This place is profoundly important. It's a place where people find grace.